isn't quite how you pictured it, the Nebraska Family Helpline is here for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Call the Nebraska Family Helpline at 888-866-8660. Any problem, anytime. Now, from Nebraska's trusted news source, this is Channel 8 News Midday. Welcome in, everyone. I'm Andrew Ward. And I'm Katrina Spurl. Well, as you saw, well, actually, we had some snow in parts of central and western Nebraska, believe it or not. But what's that going to mean for Lincoln and the surrounding area? We're going to go straight to meteorologist Brittany Foster with your midday forecast. Yeah, that's right. We saw some snow this morning, most of it off in the western half of the state, right just to the Rama Panhandle, North Platte, where we saw some of you reports up to about five inches of snow. Now things are starting to calm down across the area, though, so good news if you are getting ready to head out. Definitely around North Platte. Looks like the last that snow, at least for the most part, is pushing out and we'll continue to see this entire system pushing eventually onto the Kansas side as the day progresses. For now, southeast Nebraska, we still are seeing quite a bit, a little bit of rain. You can see that green and within that green, even a little bit of some snow flurries. Southern Lincoln and had a little bit of some flurries not too long ago. I'd say about an hour ago that since has calmed down, but a lot of that winter mix, the full on winter mix currently heading towards red cloud to the south of the Tri Cities and also just heads up. The Tri Cities had around one and a half to two inches of snow accumulation earlier today. So again, things are going to calm down as we head further into the afternoon and definitely into the evening. Eventually we'll really start to see much drier conditions as we head into overnight tonight. So it looks like things are pretty much really starting to quiet down and end in terms of a accumulation for those of you that were seeing that snow and now our change and our focus changes rather to temperatures outside. Wind chill values are still in the 20s for at least one of us right now. That's Hastings. It feels like 28 degrees there. 37 is what it feels like in Grand Island. 32 for your, the capital city. 37 in Omaha and 32 is your wind chill value in Nebraska City. So chilly out there right now. Chilly later today. Our dog of the day really has it right. Staying inside, sleeping on the couch, you know, kind of gross outside and chilly. Unfortunately, if those of you have to head out the door soon, just bundle up and maybe bring on an umbrella for the next few hours. I'll be alive after the show. <laughs> Thank you, Brittany. Well, right now, world leaders are in Scotland for COP26 or Conference of the Parties, the crucial UN Climate Summit. President Biden arrived there earlier this morning from Rome, speaking at the conference about an hour ago. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest from Glasgow. President Biden on the world stage at one of the most important climate conferences in years will demonstrate to the world the United States is not only back at the table, but hopefully leading by the power of our example. My administration is working overtime to show that our climate commitment is action, not words. Biden's infrastructure plan directs $555 billion to fighting climate change, but experts are skeptical he'll meet his goal of cutting greenhouse gases in half by 2030. We only have a brief window left before us to raise our ambitions and to raise to meet the task that's rapidly narrowing. This is a decisive decade. He joins leaders from nearly 200 countries, kicking off negotiations at the pivotal two-week summit in Glasgow. The goal is to agree on how to limit global warming, with the world heating up more in the last 29 years than in the previous 110 years. If we don't get serious about climate change today, it will be too late for our children to do so tomorrow. The key topics, reducing those gas emissions plus phasing out coal and how wealthier nations can help support developing countries already feeling the effects of our changing planet. Failure to provide the critical finance and that of loss and damage is measured, my friends, in lives and livelihoods in our communities. This is immoral and it is unjust. Some are concerned about the success of this year's conference, with leading polluters like China, Russia, and Saudi Arabia not attending. Now, as they try to decide how to move forward, countries are also reviewing their progress on the Paris Climate Accord signed at the 2015 summit. Rena Roy, ABC News, Glasgow, Scotland. Well, back here locally, we have new details after a deadly motorcycle accident in Lincoln. Police say 60-year-old Randy Turner of Lincoln died on scene, and that accident happened just after 5 o'clock Sunday morning. LPD says Turner was driving his motorcycle south on South 48th Street between Calvert and Bancroft. He hit the curb multiple times and was thrown from the bike. Officials say Turner was the only one involved in that accident. 
This morning, a 23-year-old man in critical condition after a rollover accident over the weekend. Officials say it happened just east of Waverly. The call rolled and was found in a field. Authorities say the victim was life flighted from the scene. Deputies are still investigating the cause of the accident, but do say fee speed was likely a factor. And Lincoln police say they made an arrest after a man shot his partner in the back. Officers arrived on scene Friday to a weapons violation near North 48th and Cleveland Avenue. A 47 year old woman told officers she was shot in the back by her partner, 50 year old Aaron West. The woman was treated for serious but non life threatening injuries and West was charged with first degree assault. Two men recovering from gunshot wounds this morning after a drive by shooting on Saturday. LPD says a 23 year old man arrived at a Lincoln hospital with multiple wounds to his leg and neck. He remains in critical condition. The other victim, a 19 year old man, is in serious condition. Police say the incident happened on Highway 77 between Rosa Parksway and West A Street. LPD is still investigating the cause. A violent Halloween weekend leaves at least three dead across the country. Gunfire brought parties to a halt across five states, including Texas, Ohio, Illinois, California, and New Mexico. Another 27 people were injured throughout the attacks. And ABC News reports the city of Los Angeles alone sees about 150 more crimes on Halloween than a normal day. Back here in Lincoln this morning, dozens of drug cases being dismissed after a former state employee was arrested for allegedly stealing drugs from the state patrol's evidence locker. Lancaster County attorneys have had to throw out at least 66 cases and more likely coming as they review cases surrounding these stolen drugs. This comes after a former state patrol evidence technician reportedly stole more than $1.2 million worth of drugs. That employee and her boyfriend now face federal charges of conspiracy to distribute the drugs. For the first time in two decades, cigarette sales are on the rise nationally, and Lincoln is no exception. Some local shops say they've seen their best year of sales yet. Channel 8's Alexis Skaneski has the details. It has increased during pandemic. Tobacco sales have never been better at G&J Smoke and Vape Shop near 48th and Huntington. The owner says 2020 was their busiest year yet and had a hard time keeping their shelves stocked because cigarettes and vape products were so popular. A lot of people were out of jobs or laid off and being bored at home and everybody needs their habits, cigarettes and vapes. And so it was a boring moment. Everybody was at home. So I think that's the reason why it got increased over 20, uh, 25 percent. Montego cigarettes and e-cigarettes have not only gained in popularity during the pandemic in Lincoln, but across the state and country. In fact, during the pandemic, cigarette sales rose for the first time in 20 years. And in Omaha as well, there's a few wholesalers I know their increase have uh, their business have increased a lot, especially in Omaha. According to the Federal Trade Commission's new annual cigarette report, manufacturers sold close to a billion more cigarettes in 2020 compared to 2019. Data shows people were buying in bulk in case of shortages. But the 203 billion cigarettes sold last year still does not top the 636 billion sold in 1981. Shops haven't seen business like this in decades. But locally, this increase is something they hope will stick around for the long haul. I hope uh, we keep increasing. That's what I hope. And I hope this pandemic goes away soon. Reporting in Lincoln, Alexis Skaneski, Channel 8 News. It's been something people have been trying to get on the Nebraska ballot for years now. And of course, we're talking about medical cannabis. Right now, there are 34 petition signings across the state to make sure it makes it on next year's ballot. And there are two petitions to sign. One is to protect caregivers from getting arrested so they can provide medical cannabis to those they care for. The other one is to regulate businesses that give medical marijuana to patients. And a husband and wife hosted a petition signing at their home in Bellevue since their son has a rare catastrophic seizure disorder. We've had success with some of the alternative therapies, but uh, we have the most hope and interest in medical cannabis because of all of the community online community groups that we're in and the success stories we see from other families who live in legal states. So that's why it's become really important for us, for Will and for others like him to at least have the option to try it. And for more information about the cause, you can visit the links we mentioned tab up on our website, KLKNTV.com. Arguments are underway as the U.S. Supreme Court weighs in on the constitutionality of Texas's new restrictive abortion law. ABC's Faith Abube is in Washington as the case is underway. 
Two months after Texas enacted the most restrictive abortion law in the country, the nation's highest court is set to decide its fate. Lawyers representing abortion rights advocates and those from the U.S. Justice Department are making separate arguments that the law was illegally designed to evade federal judicial scrutiny and that the U.S. Supreme Court must step in to stop it from inflicting further harm. No Texas executive official enforces SB 8 either, and so no Texas executive official may be enjoined. The Texas law, known as SB 8, bans abortions as soon as a fetal heartbeat is detected, which can be as early as six weeks before most women know they're pregnant. While there are exceptions for medical emergencies, there are none for rape or incest. Abortion rights advocates are furious that the law effectively bans a woman's constitutionally protected right to an abortion. But the Supreme Court's focus is not on Roe versus Wade, the federal landmark decision that guarantees a woman's right to choose, but on the law's enforcement mechanism, a first of its kind that empowers private citizens, not state officials, to sue anyone from an Uber driver to a doctor who helps a woman get the procedure and be eligible for damages. A reward of sorts, if successful, at least $10,000, and anyone in any state can file the lawsuit. To allow Texas' scheme to stand would provide a roadmap for other states to abrogate any decision of this court with which they disagree. The Supreme Court is now speeding through its procedures in order to hear the case after declining to intervene before it went into effect in September. Am I understanding correctly that you believe that the way this SB8 is structured, that what the chilling effect is the very multiplicity of lawsuits that are threatened against you? And the U.S. Supreme Court is expected to announce its decision sometime before the end of the year. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. The wintry mix and light showers will start to push out as we head further into the afternoon today. Highs will stay chilly in the low 40s, but warmer and dry weather is ahead this week. I'll break down your full forecast. It's coming up after the break. Stick with us. Grow your family's Christian faith and share the love of God with others with ABC Book. Welcome back, everyone. So how much Halloween candy is okay for the kids to eat? And water is the next net zero environmental target. Here's Jane King with today's wellness report. There's a wave of net zero pledges that focus on water. The UN, whose COP climates gets underway this week, is predicting there will be a 40% shortfall in freshwater resources. By 2030, often called water positive, the pledges center on making water intensive processes more efficient and putting water back into a geographic area where a company operates than, take, than uh, what is taken out. Well, although the coronavirus vaccine is the one that is on everyone's mind these days, vaccines for at least 27 diseases are now in use 
use in the U.S., according to the CDC. This includes vaccines to prevent mumps, measles, the flu, pneumonia, and more. And kids, they say, consume up to 7,000 calories on Halloween, and the average trick-or-treater consumes about three cups of sugar. The dietary guidelines say that children 3 to 17 should have no more than 10 percent sugars as part of their daily diet. Experts say a little candy is okay. Now, in addition to limiting candy intake, dentists also remind kids they need to especially brush their teeth twice a day this time of year. From the NASDAQ, I'm Jane King. Here's your health. No, your storm alert team forecast from meteorologist Brittany Foster. Well, good Monday morning, everyone. We had some snow out there this morning, and some of you are still seeing a little bit of a wintry mix outside. As we look at Grand Island, you can see we're already starting to see some of that snow that did fall this morning already melt a little bit. Now that the sun is up behind those clouds, still the ground is also just pretty warm already out there, so some of that snow is starting to disappear. And also around the area, York specifically, we also saw a light dusting from some snow flurries that moved through. That also has since disappeared, so some of that snow already is slowly going away and as for what it looks like in Lincoln right now, just damp roadways and gray clouds, a little bit of a light sprinkle and mist out there for some of us with some light showers. But overall, most of that moisture or precipitation we did see this morning is pushing southward slowly on the Kansas side. This will continue for the next several hours today, but closer to home, we're still seeing some pockets of some showers as well as some snow. You can see that blue right there. That's more of a wintry mix, I'd say, across the area as well as that pink, the green that we're seeing a little bit more of those light showers. So some of them are already starting to go south of the area, but we could see a few more of them. I'd say maybe pushing through the area for that main line exits as we head further into the evening. So by five o'clock, I think most of us are starting to dry out completely across the area and definitely into the early overnight hours. Much drier conditions on the way, but those clouds will stay hang around rather. As for storm totals, we saw around an inch to two inches across the area, maybe a few more like a little bit close to an inch on the way for some of you further down to the south on top of what we already received about one to two inches across further western half of the state into the tri cities. Of course, Lincoln, we didn't see any of that snow, just a little bit of some flurries flying around. Now our focus looks and changes really to feels like temperatures out there, what it feels like because it's chilly, feeling more like 28 degrees in Hastings, 37 in Grand Island. Island 34 in Wahoo, 32 in the Lincoln and Nebraska City area. So with that said, make sure you have your layers on since it is just such on the chilly side out there right now because we're going to hold on to these conditions even until later today. We'll hit the 40s. It looks like for most of us back around 12 o'clock, 43 degrees by 3 o'clock, and I think that's where we'll top out for our high temperatures today. 43 degrees. Now, normally, as we start off November, we're in the upper 50s, so well below average today. Heavy layers on. Go ahead and keep that umbrella with you in the car as you're heading out about, just in case you do run into any of those leftover sprinkles or showers. As for tonight, drying out, the clouds will finally also start to decrease across the area and temperatures really drop going into tomorrow morning. 27 degrees as you step outside early tomorrow morning. But don't worry, we actually see a little bit of a warm up on the way for the second half of your Tuesday. We're back in the upper 40s for highs, still obviously below average really the next three days, but still a little bit warmer than today. And by Thursday, we're a little bit closer back to average, almost to the 50s. I think we'll fall short of it, though, more likely hitting the upper 40s for your Thursday, but a little bit more sunshine here and there throughout the week. Overall, another drier forecast. We have breezy conditions returning for Friday, and also that's when we should see a little bit more of those 50s popping up and then back closer to average as we head into the weekend Husker game day on Saturday. Mostly sunny skies. It looks like right now 55 degrees and by Sunday, don't forget to fall back already that time of the year. We're falling back already with more of those 50s on the way, even looking at far ahead next week. Well, at least Husker fans can enjoy some nice weather on Saturday. Yep, without snow on the ground. Yes, yes. yes. well, <laughs> yeah, right now, dry, great forecast without snow on the ground. Thank you, Brittany. And still to come on Channel 8 News Midday, one retailer already started its Black Friday sales. We're going to tell you which one. Plus, money-saving tips if you're buying a home or refinancing. Stick with us, everyone. Exceeding your expectations is what we strive for at Colonial Chapel Funeral Home.
Alaska families. If Joe Biden refuses to do his job, then it's up to governors to do theirs. Charles W. Herbster, Governor. Welcome back, everyone. Today's Money Saving Monday is for those of you who are thinking of buying a home or refinancing. I put together what to consider when choosing a mortgage that's right for you. If you are thinking about buying a home or maybe refinancing, the go to option for most home buyers has been the 30 year fixed rate mortgage, but it may not be the best loan for you. CNN Business recently looked at when to go for a 30 year and when to opt for a loan with a shorter term. In some cases, it may make sense to go with a 15 or 20 year mortgage. They require higher monthly payments, but come with lower interest rates and they let you build up equity in your home faster. First, look at cost differences of the loans. How much more will your monthly payment be with a short term loan? And how much will you save in interest over the life of the loan with a shorter term? If you itemize deductions on your tax return, you'll want to look at any tax implications of a shorter term loan and take into account your overall financial situation. If you're stretching to meet your monthly bills, you may want the lower payments a long term loan offers. And if you have any money saving story ideas, please email us at msm at klknTV.com. And now that Halloween is over, Target is getting a jump start on Christmas already. Why not, right? <laughs> well, the retailer started its Black Friday sales today. Each week, we'll be offering holiday best deals, which are the best prices for the whole season. These sales include electronics, toys, kitchen appliances, apparel, and, of course, beauty. New deals are released each Sunday, and not all of them will last the whole week. Experts have been recommending people shop early this year because of the shortages in supply chain issues. Still to come at Channel 8 News Midday, another round of flight cancellations across the nation. We're going to tell you how you might be impacted coming up next. Stay with us. Tired of throwaway vacuum? we'd be comparing all the time, and I don't think we could top it. Thank you for letting us be part of your story. Welcome back everyone. Now to the travel chaos in the skies. American Airlines canceling hundreds of flights this weekend as it deals with weather and staffing issues. ABC's Trevor Alt has more on the ripple effects nationwide. This morning, the fallout at airports across America from another mass cancellation spree. All these people in line trying to find alternative flights. More than 2,000 flights canceled this weekend across several airlines. My flight was 12 hours ago. I haven't been able to get a hold of anybody. Got work to go back to. 
Lines like this one in Dallas packed with frustrated passengers and in Philadelphia, customers demanding answers, trying to get rebooked. I'm in concourse B at the Philadelphia airport where I'm standing in line with a lot of people you can see over my shoulder here. <laughs> We've got that much ahead of us. I'm really frustrated. American Airlines having the most trouble scrapping more than 1,800 flights, blaming weather and a shortage of flight attendants in a letter to employees, now pledging 4,000 new team members and 600 new flight attendants heading into the holiday season. It's going to be a very, very tough holiday travel season. So if you're planning on travel, traveling during the holidays, you better have a plan B. The chaos comes just weeks after Southwest canceled 2,000 flights in a matter of days, stranding thousands of travelers and employees and costing the airline $75 million. And after almost 200 cancellations this weekend, Southwest now further scaling back their flights to make sure they have enough staff. Now, for what it's worth, the CEOs of all the major airlines have been reassuring their stakeholders that they are, in fact, prepared for the holiday season. But it has become quite clear that even a small-scale disruption could potentially cause a catastrophic chain reaction. Trevor Alt, ABC News, Miami. And we did check to see if there are any flight cancellations here in Nebraska. Just one cancellation at the Lincoln Airport, 12 in Omaha at last check. So much more to come on Taylor News Midday. Deer-related accidents are up. We're going to explain why. Plus, an elementary school closes after a COVID outbreak. That story and a whole lot more coming up next. Give your child a head start and on the right track by preparing. and nothing is interrupted, everything works, so that's definitely been a positive. Now, from Nebraska's trusted news source, this is Channel 8 News Midday. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Katrina Spurl. And I'm Andrew Ward. Well, Mother Nature is one for one so far <laughs> in days in November where it is snowed. Let's head on over to meteorologist Brittany Foster. She gives us an updated forecast. The good news, no more snow later this week, guys. We are going to expect drier conditions even starting today. Most of the snow, the wintry mix we saw this morning and rain is starting to shift southward out of the area. But you can see this is a large system. You know, that snow really across Nebraska, wintry mix, and also now rain on the Kansas side. Everything that's moving out of Nebraska is just turning into 
in terrain once it passes state line onto the Kansas side since it's just a tad bit warmer there and already really long I 80. We have dried out just a tad. Most of that moisture is close to Beatrice right now and to the south of the dry cities where that winter wintry mix rather still is kind of pushing through and we'll just continue to see the conditions like that. Really the rest of the day today. This entire system starts to fall apart and we're just left with cloud coverage. Now our focus now currently shifts to the wind chill value outside. It is still feeling very chilly. Normally this is what it feels like right in the morning 5 a.m. But instead we're all still feeling like those 30s as you're stepping outside right now. Actually air temperatures are also in the low 40s and we're not going to warm much as we look at the rest of the day today. Highs right around 43 degrees. Those clouds stick around and we don't see the clouds pulling apart until overnight tonight and that's actually not really a good thing. That's going to allow temperatures just to drop into the 20s. My concern tomorrow morning is the potential for a freeze. We'll talk about that coming up in your full forecast. Ugh, not looking forward to that. Thank you very much, Brittany. <laughs> Well, if you're getting ready to hit the road this morning, remember to be extra cautious this time of the year. Here's Channel 8 reporter Nathan Grieve to explain why. Apparently that's a problem lots of folks are having because the Lancaster County Sheriff's Office is dealing with the aftermath. Last year, year to date this time, uh, we, we investigated 157 car crashes, car deer crashes. This year, uh, year to date, we're at 176 uh, car deer crashes. So the number is about 13% higher than last year. It's just that time of the year again, really. It doesn't help that it's pretty dark around drive time. And deer are, are usually most active as dusk and dawn. Plus, there's still harvesting going on, which creates some movement for, for wildlife and, and then hunting season. And as people are out and about a little bit more often, that's likely not helping matters either. Are these numbers up because there are more deer? Or is it up because there are more miles driven? And I think it's my, maybe more miles driven because of COVID from last year. And keeping alert is your best defense. And if you have a deer in your path, just hit the brakes. Don't try to avoid it. Well, some grim news to report this morning. The number of people who have died from COVID-19 worldwide has just surpassed 5 million. The global tally of deaths from John Hopkins University now at 5,425,000. The highest toll in the world is in the U.S. More than 766,000 people have died from COVID, followed by Brazil and India. Well, after a COVID-19 outbreak, Black Elk Elementary School in Millard made the decision to close the school today. Officials say they have over 25 active cases. And in an email sent out to parents, it says Black Elk will be required to mask up until Thanksgiving break. The Millard School District plans on providing another update tomorrow. Moderna says the FDA needs more time to review its COVID-19 vaccines in teenagers. The vaccine maker said it wants to review the risk of heart inflammation in its COVID-19 vaccine in children and teens aged 12 to 7. Moderna predicts the review might delay emergency use authorization for this age group until about January. The FDA is concerned about the risk of a rare type of heart inflammation called myocarditis that's linked to both the Pfizer's and Moderna's vaccines. Pfizer is already shipping out millions of doses of its vaccines for children ages 5 to 11. Yeah, this is an anticipation of the CDC signing off on the shots for them this week. ABC's Ariel Reshef has more. This morning, final preparations underway across the country with the start of injections of the Pfizer vaccine for kids ages 5 to 11 expected as soon as Wednesday. A CDC advisory panel meeting Tuesday. The CDC director likely to sign off soon after that. 15 million initial Pfizer doses shipping over the weekend, but the White House urging patients as providers begin receiving and administering those pediatric doses, saying it may take until next week to get a majority of eligible kids their first shot. The bulk of vaccines will be in their locations by the week of November 8th. Infectious disease doctor and mom of two, Heather Howell, is anxious to get her five-year-old and eight-year-old kids vaccinated after tending to children and sick babies in the NICU at NYU Langone. With kids, there's always um, thoughtfulness and, and to make sure that you're doing the best thing. But I do hope that people um, trust the science and that we can, you know, encourage them to vaccinate their children um, and so that as a community we can move forward. As families prepare for younger children to get those shots, pushback from some first responders to vaccine mandates. In New York City, 2,000 FDNY employees calling out sick over the past week, causing a number of fire department engine companies to be taken out of service. The fire commissioner saying irresponsible bogus sick leave by some of our members is creating a danger for New Yorkers and their fellow firefighters. 
they need to return to work or risk the consequences of their actions. And the FDNY says so far those sick calls have not impacted response times, but the fire department union this morning saying that dozens of companies could be closed today. Ariel Reshef, ABC News, New York. Well, if recommended by the CDC, Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine would be the first cleared for use in children's ages 5 to 11 in the U.S. The vaccine would be administered in two doses given 21 days apart. But each dose would be just a third of the size of the one given to people 12 and older. And some parents have had questions about why the dosing size for the vaccine is based on a child's age and not their weight. Vaccines really are based on the developmental stage or age of the immune system in a younger person. That's why you see the differences in the cutoffs at the ages. Trials have shown the two smaller doses of Pfizer's vaccine generated just as strong an immune response in children as the larger doses given to people over 12. Pfizer says there's a potential to lower the dose if it's COVID-19 vaccine for children ages 12 to 15 in the future. But right now, the company says their key goal is to provide protection and a safe and effective vaccine. A lucky Lincoln resident is $182,000 richer this morning. According to the Nebraska Lottery website, the winning Pick 5 jackpot ticket was purchased at the U-Stop near the 27th and I-80 exit. The winner of the jackpot will have 180 days to cash in on that award. Well, the Halloween fun continued at a local church Sunday. General Shepherd Baptist Church in Southwest Lincoln put on the event called Light Up the Night. There was plenty for kids to do, including checking out a fire truck, some balloon animal fun, and jumping in a bouncy castle. Penny Zimmerman put together the event for her congregation. Oh, it's awesome. I love it. It's great to see the kids and great to see their parents with them. You know, just families getting together. That's what makes it all worth it, seeing a smile on their faces. And there was also a trunk or treat for children to go through. Themes of trunks included Candyland, Space Jam, and Minecraft. And kids could walk through and get as much candy as they wanted. Well, many people in our area use pumpkins as decorations for Halloween. And now that it's over, you may be wondering what to do with them. The uncarved ones will be used to feed the animals at the Wildlife Safari Park. And then the carved pumpkins are going to be used for compost at Soil Dynamics. There's a nonprofit holding a pumpkin drop off tomorrow at the Hy-Vee in Plattsmouth from 3 until 6 in the evening. Even if the pumpkin is starting to rot, those can still be used as compost. All they ask is for pumpkins to not have paints, glitter, or wax on them. And what I discovered is that our food waste in the landfill, because of the way landfills are made, Oxygen can't get to that food waste to break down. That's really important. So in the meantime, imagine a head of lettuce, for example, really flimsy, easy to break down. It can hang out in a landfill for 10 to 25 years. Well, if you use real hay or corn stalks as decorations, they will also take those for compost as well. And still to come this midday, fruit prices on the rise at local grocery stores. Plus, a lot of people in the state woke up to some snow on the ground. Meteorologist Brittany Foster is in next. Do you have neck and back pain? Are you recovering from an injury, surgery, or car accident? Coddington and Hickman Physical Therapy can help, specializing in rehabilitative outpatient services to improve flexibility, gain strength, and to reduce your pain. Coddington and Hickman Physical Therapy, two convenient locations. Coddington Physical Therapy in West Lincoln next to Russ's Market and Hickman Physical Therapy next to Subway. No PCP referrals required. Book your appointment today with Coddington and Hickman Physical Therapy. Make a statement inside and outside of the home with Cultured Stone from Fireplace Stone and Patio. Making selections for your new house or home improvement project? Our stone is perfect for decorating an accent wall, beautifying your fireplace, or modernizing your curb appeal. Engineered to stand the test of time and backed by a 50-year warranty, our stone veneers offer an extensive range of lightweight, natural colors and textures that are sure to impress. Shop Cultured Stone today. Available exclusively through Fireplace Stone and Patio's designer showroom. Sharing smiles together is a gift. At Aspen Dental, it's easy to gift yourself the smile you deserve. New patients, get started with a comprehensive exam and full set of x-rays with no obligation. And if you don't have insurance, it's free. Plus, get 20% off your treatment plan. Enjoy flexible payment options and savings when it matters most. We're here to make your smile shine bright so you can start the new year feeling all right. Call 1-800-ASPEN DENTAL seven days a week or book today at aspendental.com. I came to the border because I wanted to see the situation for myself. 
Nebraska has over 60,000 illegal immigrants in our state. Illegal immigration, it costs our state over $300 million every year. Washington's failure to act is hurting all Nebraska families. If Joe Biden refuses to do his job, then it's up to governors to do theirs. Charles W. Herbster, Governor. Welcome back, everyone. Prices are going up for bananas, pineapples, and fresh cut fruit. And water is the next net zero environmental target. Here's Jane King with today's Ag Report. There is a wave of net zero pledges that focus on water. The UN, whose COP26 climate conference takes place this week, is predicting there will be a 40% shortfall in fresh water resources by 2030. Often called water positive, the pledges centers on making water intensive processes more efficient and putting more water back into a geographic area where a company operates, then it takes out. Well, Amazon holds a 20% stake in the electric vehicle maker Rivian Automotive. The e-commerce giant disclosed that in a filing on Friday. Amazon has contracted Rivian to produce 100,000 electric last mile delivery vehicles by 2030. And John Deere has announced it's reached a tentative agreement with the United Auto Workers for a new labor contract. The agreement does have to get approval from UAW workers. John Deere officials said that the agreement would last six years for the employees that are under contract. And inflation pressures are forcing Del Monte to hike fruit prices. The price increases go into effect today. They'll be levied on bananas, pineapples, and fresh cut fruit. The company did not say by how much those prices will be raised. From the NASDAQ market site, I'm Jane King with your Ag and Energy Report. No. Your Storm Alert Team Forecast from meteorologist Brittany Foster. We are 20 minutes away from 12 o'clock on this Monday, and it started off with some snow out there, a little bit of some flurries flying around for some of us, and then others light rain. This is what it currently looks like, though, in Grand Island. Big difference from several hours ago when that snow was falling for you all. We saw completely the grass just covered in white. Now we're starting to see a little bit more of the grass returning, and you have to keep in mind it's because the ground is so warm. We just hit the 70s for highs on Saturday, so that's helping melt that snow pretty quickly around the Grand Island area. That's also the case closer to York. You had a dusting about a few hours ago. Now you're back to nice uh, browning grass across the area. So that snow is already disappearing. We still are seeing the wet roadways across the area. The Lincoln, for example, just completely soaked on the roads as well as the grass and as for the sky, just still stuck under those gray clouds. Now, the entire system that brought us that wintry mix and the little bit of rain for some of us is pushing down southward onto the Kansas side, and it's quickly disappearing. You can see around the Lincoln area, Lancaster County in general, drying out most of the green precipitation currently south, going through Gage County onto the Kansas side, and all that wintry mix, the bluish colors that we still have left out there, it's also pushing down south of below the Tri-Cities right now. So starting to see drier conditions. We're going to see conditions like that really continuing the next several hours, actually really picking up even as we get after one o'clock into about five o'clock. Almost all of us will see much drier conditions overall, almost completely dry, I even say. And as we head into right tonight, we start to see drier conditions and all of the clouds pushing out. Now, on top of what we already received, maybe a little bit more for some of you, but we're already drying out again. So I think we're done. The Tri Cities had about one to two inches of rain or uh, snow, rather. And then for western Nebraska, reports up to five for some of you. So a lot of snow fell for others. Uh, and then you look at southeast Nebraska and we didn't get much of that snow in at all. But we definitely got the colder air for today. Wind chill values are still in those 30s across the area. It feels like freezing in Lincoln right now. 37 in Omaha as well as Grand Island off to the west and 33 in Hebron. And these wind chill values will kind of carry on for the rest of the day today. We'll finally see actual air temperatures hitting the 40s closer to 12 o'clock. And as for highs today, stuck in the low 40s. I'm thinking 43 degrees for your high. Now keep in mind for the first day of November, we're usually close to 59, 58 degrees. So well below average today with that wintry mix and precipitation really drying out. And as we head into overnight tonight, the clouds will also start to decrease. 
Yay, that's normally a good thing, right? At least during the day, it leaves the sunshine, but overnight, that's not a good thing. It's actually going to allow temperatures to drop into those 20s, so very chilly start off to your Tuesday, but we do rebound into the afternoon, warming back into the upper 40s, still below average, but it's a little warmer than today, and then we kind of level out a little bit by Wednesday. 45 degrees then, upper 40s on Thursday, a little bit closer to those 50s, but we won't see the 50s return really until Friday of this week when we'll hit a temperature around 52 degrees and also breezy conditions around that time. Overnight lows also warm just a little bit more every single day, but we have several more war warning or mornings rather with overnight lows in those 30s close to that freezing mark. And as we go ahead and look at the weekend, we're back in the mid 50s. We fall back an hour on Sunday. Dry conditions. Husker game day looking also pretty nice guys at 55 degrees. That's our high temperature right now. Do you have enough clothes to get into work tomorrow? Are you going to be warm enough? Ah, uh, yes. I need to remember to glove or bring gloves next time. Yes. Now it's 27 degrees early. Is that cold enough for us to go out and turn our cars on before? So it's uh, I mean, warmer? That, that's up to you, but I'm thinking I might because the 20s are a little bit too chilly for me. All right, uh, good. Believe it or not, I already did that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Brady. <laughs> well, before we head to break, here's a look at your latest midday stock reports. We'll be right back, everyone. The preceding portion of Channel 8 I. Treat your vacuum to a tune-up at Oric and Mila of Lincoln. They service all brands and will have your vacuum mowing up cleaning like new for 20 years. Across from Von Mar on 29th and Pine Lake Road. Welcome back, everyone. ABC's Ginger Z bringing us a closer look now at how wind energy can help save the planet and create jobs. Coast to coast, there are 69,000 wind turbines churning out clean electricity in our nation. They're almost like towering troopers in the effort to slow global warming. Can I go to the left? According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, wind turbine service technician jobs are going to increase by 68% by the year 2030. That makes them the second fastest growing occupation in the United States. For Ava Gonzalez, working on a wind farm in Lyford, Texas has been a windfall. The reason I made the transition from the oil and gas industry because I realized that I wanted to start taking care of the environment. Fueled by the Biden administration's plan to deploy enough new offshore wind farms to power more than 10 million homes by the end of the decade, the wind business is booming. One study finds that the expansion of offshore wind farming could pump more than $100 billion into the global economy. They are doing it because it's an area that they can make a profit. So it's good business as well as, as good for the environment. So when you talk about the size of a wind turbine, the average one is about 300 feet high. That's like the Statue of Liberty. And from blade to blade, they can be more than a football field wide. Even though these look like 
huge wind turbines, and they are, but they're kind of babies in the industry. 2.3 megawatt. They're now putting in 5 and 6 megawatt, and these are nothing compared to the behemoths that are going in offshore. We visited the country's first operational offshore wind farm in Rhode Island, and Governor Daniel McKee believes the state will transition to 100% renewable energy by 2030. A other revolution wind is on the table right now with 50 wind turbines that will be up and operating by 2023. 270,000 homes will be powered by that wind farm about 15 miles off the New England coast. Seven new and far bigger offshore wind farms will break ground, or rather break water, in the next three years. That should create 80,000 new jobs and enough electricity to hit that Biden administration goal of powering 10 million homes with wind. Plus, all that clean energy cuts carbon emissions big time. The equivalent of taking nearly 17 million cars off the road for an entire year. I love my job. I get up every morning. I love what I do and I don't see myself doing anything else. I want to leave a better tomorrow for my family. We've got a way to make your Halloween candy disappear in no time. And it's not magic, but it sure is tasty. When children are your everything, anything can be. I've been suffering from an eating disorder for over two decades. And she says she counsels others on weight loss. You're teaching young girls how to destroy their lives. New Dr. Phil. Weekdays at 4 on KLKN TV. In 2019, over 500 children in Nebraska were adopted into their forever home. For Nebraskans who choose to adopt, your kindness is a beacon of light for children who need it the most. For those considering adoption, you have a unique opportunity to change a child's life for the better. No family is perfect, however, it doesn't take a perfect family to make a difference. Thank you again to all Nebraskans who decide to adopt a foster child. Your compassion makes all the difference. More information for those considering adoption is available by calling 1-800-7-PARENT. Tired of staring at stained ceilings or walls with dents, holes, cracks, and nail pops? Call Patch Pros. Patch Pros can professionally repair your damaged walls and ceilings. I'm Steve Herman, owner of Patch Pros. Your time is too important to mess around with drywall repairs. Give us a call. We'll show up on time, we'll get the job done quickly, and we won't leave a mess. Do you need Patch Pros? Of course you do. For a free estimate, call 430-9161 or visit us online at patchproslincoln.com. Lincoln's Wall and Ceiling Repair Specialists. If this past year has reminded you that you're not done living life to the fullest, we know a special place where each day can be as purpose-driven and fulfilling as the last. A place where you're part of a community of exceptional people. A place where it just feels right. Legacy Retirement Communities. Schedule a tour today by calling 402-436-3000 or online at LegacyRetirement.com. Ernie's Mattress First, your local sleep specialists. This Mr. Food segment brought to you by hy V, where there is a helpful smile in every aisle. Welcome back, everyone. Well, have you got any leftover Halloween candy? Hopefully it, you still do. Yes, if you do, Howard's got a way to turn that into a tasty treat. Let's head to the test kitchen. I hope you had a good Halloween. I know he did. And whether you were out trick-or-treating with the kids or passing out candy at home, there's a pretty good chance that this morning, when you walked into the kitchen, you were greeted with a big bowl of leftover candy. And if you're thinking, how the heck am I going to get rid of all of this? Well, we have an idea. The first thing we do is beat some butter with white and brown sugar and a little vanilla. Next, we add a couple of eggs, and once this comes together, we slowly add our flour that we mix with a little baking soda and salt. Now it's time to grab a handful of those chocolate bars, chop them up, and add them to our batter. Just seeing where this is headed is getting me excited. Okay, now we spoon our batter into a baking dish, and after smoothing it out, we top it with even more candy bars before popping it in the oven. Once this is cooled, we cut it up and serve them with big glasses of milk. And the nice thing is, every time you make these, you can change up the type of candy bar to give it a new personality. To get the recipe for our Halloween candy bars, all you have to do is visit our website, 
I'm Howard with Kelly and her new friend in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a crazy good candy way mm -hmm. for you to say, ooh, it's so good. How's your friend? You're not sharing? Mm -hmm. Doesn't look like you're sharing. Coming up on GMA3, our David Muir is bringing us the latest from the 2021 UN Climate Change Conference in Glasgow, Scotland. Also, it's uh, the eve of the Virginia governor's election, and we're talking to the Democratic candidate and former governor Terry McAuliffe. Also, the points partner Owen Beanie is sharing tips and tricks to make the most of your credit card rewards this holiday season. And we are chatting with the stars of the new Lifetime movie, Highway to Heaven. It's a reboot of the classic 80s series. This is all coming up on GMA3. Lower Platte South NRD now has two conservation coaches. So why would they want your candy? Well, according to a study by the American Heart Association, children as young as one year old already consuming 12 teaspoons of sugar per day, and all that sugar leads to cavities. But you can find more information up on our website at klknTV.com. If I were a kid, I'd probably not sell the candy. Not sell the candy, you know, eat it all? Whatever. When I was a kid, I would like decipher between the good candy and the bad candy, so. Give the bad candy away? Yes. I'm telling you, as an adult, I still would not give the candy. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'll give you my bad candy. Bye, right. Brittany. Yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at the forecast. We had that snow and wintry mix this morning. Still a little bit of light rain likely as we head into the afternoon, but overall, drier conditions will dry out for the second half of your day. Highs only in the low 40s today, but a little warmer tomorrow and much drier. 47 degrees for your high. We just have to get through that morning. 27 degrees for your low as you wake up tomorrow morning. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Brittany, and thank you all for joining us on your Monday. But don't forget to tune into the 5, 6, and 10 o'clock shows. GMA 3 coming up next. With the Channel 8 Eyewitness News mobile app, you'll be the first to know. Get alerts about breaking news and weather, all in the palm of your hand. Stop by Comfort Made Mattress Factory today and save.